Hi. And now we're heading into our week on survey research. And I want to talk to you a little bit first about the week that we just left, uh, talking about causation and correlation. I think as a group, uh, the class did a much better job after the turn on our discussion board critiquing each other's ideas and, and critiquing your own initial thoughts on what causes academic achievement versus what's simply correlated with it. I still think there's a lot left on the table there. And one of the most difficult things to, to really wrestle to the ground is how many degrees of separation are there between an event uh, and, and then an outcome. Uh, and how many other things play a, a role in creating that outcome. But then also, what are the things that are so closely aligned uh, with certain types of behaviors or interventions uh, or activities that they seem to be causing uh, the outcome, in this case, uh, higher academic achievement. And I think it's on that last point that people still very easily get hung up. So when we, we start to think about all the different factors uh, that affect whether a student is going to be successful or not, uh, in some cases, they're very much related, and I think that's, that's probably the next step in your thinking that you should take. Is kind of go back to that list and ask yourself, well, how many of these things are all related? How many of them influence each other? And as you're grouping them, can you find that there are driving forces within the groups? Uh, in other words, um, does uh, the parent's involvement uh, in the child's education or expectations actually lead to lots of other types of inputs or, or, um, or activities and interventions that would eventually lead to academic achievement. What about wealth? Are there things that go along with wealth uh, that, um, that play a role? But if you take wealth away, it's much harder for those things to be there. Would those uh, successes still be there if you took wealth away? In some cases, yes. Uh, in some cases, maybe not. But those are the types of questions you have to ask. So just to review, as you go through and you think about that list again, start to put them into groups. Think about what, what things are associated with each other. And as you look at those groups, you're going to find that certain things emerge. They kind of bubble to the top as drivers within that group. That all those other things tend to exist when this one or two uh, other types of things are, are there. And, uh, and if so, um, is it the driving force that's causing uh, academic achievement or is it all the little things that go along with it? So those are some things just to challenge you a little bit more and think about it. You don't necessarily have to go into the discussion board. You're welcome to if you want to continue that dialogue. I don't have a discussion plan for this week because you'll be busy finishing up your article critiques. And I've already gotten uh, quite a few questions by email and, and people asking for clarification and, and some input. I've been happy to provide that. So if any of you have any more thoughts or questions that you want me to address going into the critique, uh, into when the critique is due, feel free to, uh, to pass those along to me either on the discussion board or on the email. Uh, now survey research, research is the reading topic um, and the quiz topic for this week. Uh, survey research is is one of the types of research we'll cover uh, as a chapter in this book that you're probably most familiar with. You've filled out lots of surveys. Uh, people in schools are sometimes very survey happy. You might have a survey happy administrator in your school right now. Uh, and so you may be very familiar with them from that perspective. You may have been tasked with writing surveys before. Uh, but um, I'll just offer that while it is a, a credible and in some cases a good way to gather information, uh, usually when it's working best, it's to gather just a, a first blush. Uh, uh, you get some original insight into, into people's perceptions uh, or what's happening, what kind of phenomena that you might want to ask deeper questions about later. And unfortunately, surveys often get a bad name because a lot of surveys are really bad. So um, uh, people who haven't been trained in how to write surveys uh, when we're doing action research in schools are often the ones who are, who are writing the surveys. And so uh, pay attention to the gremlins in this chapter. I think it's particularly interesting and it's a nice lead in uh, to when we're spending more time talking about qualitative research later on in the semester. So 
Uh, best of luck finishing up your article critiques. Again, uh, good job uh, improving the level of the dialogue uh, in the discussion board, and I look forward to seeing you online.